Okay, so today I'm going to show people how to set up a functioning web development environment on your home PC um, using the LAMP stack and the GitHub repository for, uh, for version control. So first things first, I'm going to preface this video with um, I'm using Debian flavored Linux, so um, that means the Ubuntu, Mint, or Debian itself, or any of those derivatives. Um, these tutorials won't work that well for Fedora Core machines like Red Hat or something like that. So I suggest that um, you know if you're using Fedora Core, you find one specific for your, your actual Linux box. And also, um, I'm also going to assume you have a fresh install of some Debian flavor of Linux, and uh, there's been no packages installed. Um, there hasn't been any changes made and uh, yeah and then we're gonna just jump right into it so if you've never used Linux before um, we're gonna open up what's called the terminal and that's basically what would be the command prompt in Windows and you can do that a number of different ways if you're in unity you can go to uh, the unity bar and just type in term and that will bring up the terminal and if you are in Mint or GNOME or any of those particular flavors of Linux, you can just go to Menu, Accessories, and then in Accessories, Terminal will be sitting right there. However, um, in Ubuntu and Mint specifically, I know for sure, if you hold all, down Alt Control T, that will just bring up a terminal win window for you um, whenever you need it. And as a matter of fact, you can just bring up as many terminal windows as you see fit. So that is one thing to keep in mind. It's kind of handy. You're always going to be using terminals in Linux, so it's just a little shortcut to save you some time. So what we're going to be doing is getting acquainted with uh, two. Oh, come on now. There we go. We're going to be getting acquainted with two commands. Um, the first one's going to be sudo. And what sudo does is uh, it's the Windows equivalent of giving um, administrative rights. So when you install a program in Windows, it comes up with a little prompt saying, do you want to allow this program to install itself in Windows? You say yes, the program go goes ahead and installs itself. In Linux, um, there's a number of different ways to do this, but specifically on the command line and specifically in Debian flavor Linux, we use the command sudo. And like I said, that does the exact same thing. In other flavors of Linux, you might see root or su, depending on, like I said, w which Linux you're using and all that fun stuff. So um, the next command that we're going to be looking at is apt. And what apt is, is a package manager that is already linked to a whole bunch of uh, pre-stocked repositories that are on the internet. And these repositories hold files that um, Linux could be dependent on and needs, uh, but doesn't need to run, but might need in the future, or packages that applications need to run on Linux, or um, full applications themselves. So I'll show you a little demonstration of how apt works. Um, it saves a lot of it saves a lot of the legwork. Like, say for example, you were to go to uh, www.whatever.com and download a file from that site and you wanted to install it on your computer, you would go to the website, download the file, double click on the file, and then the installer would install, install itself to the file system. However, in Linux, we can skip a lot of that. Um, granted, we know that the application or files that we need exist, and we can just s tell app to go on the internet, download the files we need, and then install them right in the computer, or right to our computer all in one line. So we're gonna type in sudo. So because we're, we're writing to the file system, we want to um, give it administrative rights or root access. So sudo apt get install. And basically, so we're telling apt to get a package and install it. And then we got to give it a package name. So I'm going to install Vim because that's my choice of text editor. And um, I'll just kind of run through this. It's really nice and quick so you kind of get an idea um, when a whole bunch of stuff comes on the screen, like what do I do? Do I press yes? Do I press no here? So when you get prompt in um, Unix command lines, in so Linux or FreeBSD or any c um, command lines, basically, you will enter your password. However, 
it won't show that any characters actually got entered into the command line, but it's nothing to worry about. The command line actually received the characters, it just doesn't actually show them um, physically to you on the monitor. So I entered my password, press enter, and it, had I entered the incorrect password, it would have prompted me again to enter the correct password. So here we see, we're going to say, or we're going to have a quick read here, and it says the following extra pa packages will be installed. Vim common runtime tiny suggested packages, those guys, and the following new packages will be installed. So Vim and Vim run runtime, um, those will be upgraded because those were already um, previously installed in into our computer. So uh, do we want to continue? Absolutely. Whoops, I don't know why that's happening. But okay, so now that uh, it's finished installing, this is kind of what it will look like. Um, you'll get a whole bunch of stuff, just kind of telling you what it did, where it wrote to the file system, that sort of thing. Now, that was just an example, just to kind of get you guys acquainted. You definitely did not have to do that, but Vim is definitely not something that is um, bad to have in your computer. It's always good to have a command line text ed editor, so um, your choice if you want to install that. Next, um, you want to make sure that apt is up to date and everything that can be upgraded um, is upgraded. So we're going to do two more commands before we actually get into doing anything uh, LAMP stack related, but um, we just want to make sure that we're getting the most up to date packages, files, dependencies, that sort of thing. So our first one's going to be apt get update. Go ahead and run that. It will prompt you for your password enter your password and all that's doing is making sure that um, your repositories and the URLs to those repo repositories are still good. Um, you might get failed to fetch errors but um, that can mean a, a number of different things like these repositories could be down for maintenance or they could be um, um, they could be deprecated so if, if, if you get a whole bunch of failed to fetch errors it doesn't necessarily mean that um, everything's messed up. It's just it is a common thing that happens. So uh, you should be okay. It sh there should be some sort of main repository still active that is going to get us through this tutorial. So our next um, our next command that we're going to enter is sudo apt get upgrade, and what that's that's going to upgrade all our packages. So go ahead and run that. I'm not going to run that. I've already ran that on this machine. So you'll be prompted to uh, do you want to continue? So y yes to continue. And then uh, a few times throughout the installation or the upgrading you will be asked to um, keep the default action and you just want to go ahead and press either yes or end. Either one is fine. Um, you don't need to deal with that stuff. You just need to be present for it to uh, give it the permissions to allow it to keep installing. So go ahead and do sudo apt get upgrade. It will take maybe 10 to 15 minutes depending on the speed of your computer and the speed of your internet. And then once you're done that, just uh, come back to this video and we'll actually get started on installing the lamp stack. All right, so now that you have app all upgraded, you should be looking at a, at a screen like this should show that it set up a whole bunch of packages and uh, got everything up to date. So now we're actually ready to get to the meat of this tutorial. We're going to install um, the server um, and what that is is Apache MySQL database in the PHP scripting language. So there is ways to just do sudo apt actually hold on we'll just go ahead and clear that sudo apt get install Apache to my uh, actually my SQL and PHP all individually. However, there is a package out there in one of the repositories that does all that stuff for us, and it configures it and sets it all up for us. So we're going to type in sudo app get install lamp server. And you're going to hold down shift and press the number six, and um, that's that's sometimes rec referred to as the caret. So we're going to give it the caret and press enter. You're going to be prompted for your password naturally. And we're going to start reading the package list for the lamp server. So you'll get a, you'll see there was a whole bunch of stuff found. Um, 
127 megabytes, and all kinds of stuff. The Apache web server, um, there's there's Perl dependencies in here, PHP, MySQL, the works. So it's going to get a whole bunch of stuff ready to download, tell you, you know, what's coming onto the computer, and uh, ask you if you want to continue. So yes, we want to continue. Press enter and then it's going to go out onto the web to the repositories get all the information we need and bring it back onto the computer and compile it for us um, this is going to take a few minutes like I said it will take a few minutes depending on internet connection computer speed that sort of thing so um, just pause this video and then once you're done you can um, come back and we'll keep going so you're going to come to this screen about midway through the installation and what this is is if you're not familiar with what, what my mysql is is it's a database one of the more common databases used and uh, that's one of the more fundamental parts of the lamp stack um, so we're just going to put in a username or sorry not a username but a uh, administrative password or a root password just to get it all set up and then we'll finish off the installation and we'll, we'll come to that in a future video. So you can just put in anything you want really, just make sure you remember it and repeat it and that's all you have to do, just press enter and it will finish up the installation, just unpackage everything, install them and um, then basically we are ready to rock, like we have a fully functioning lamp stack on our computer. Sometimes you'll see, you know, errors and, st and stuff like that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's an error that is disrupting, a, like, what's actually taking place on the computer. It just might be an error that the, that, um, is going to be corrected on its own by the computer itself. So if you do get some errors, it's not always the end of the world. But um, if you're having some troubles and you got you entered your password for MySQL and you got to this point and you you didn't get these two lines right here, or sorry, these three lines: setting up Apache 2, processing triggers for libc bin, and ld config deferred processing now taking place. Um, if you didn't get those something probably went wrong, um, in which case you might want to just go through it, all the process again and um, start from there basically. So now that we have LAMP installed, what do we do? We've installed all these things but we can't see it, we don't know is it working, did it install, did it not install. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our web browser and open up a new window. All we're going to do is type local host and bam, there we go. It works. This is the default web page for the server. The web server software is running but no content has been added yet. So that's all. Basically all you'd have to do from here is replace this page with actual HTML content and you could view a web page. Um, it's not 100% functional yet, there's a few things to do, some more things to configure and explain. So in the next video we will be setting up PHP MyAdmin and then in the next video after that we will be set setting up our GitHub account and uh, taking it from there. Alright, thanks for watching.